Ciao and welcome! I'm Giulia and today's class is really exciting. Are you ready? Let's dive in! Changing colors of objects and food, it's a super useful tool that you can implement in your food photography. For example, sometimes you don't have the right colored props and that's okay, as long as you know how to fix it in post. Because changing colors, sometimes it's a really good technique to create a more harmonious color combination in your composition and in your image. And if you know about color theory, which we teach in other video classes, then uh, with this Photoshop tool, you can create the perfect color palette and the perfect color combination in your images, which means they will have a lot more impact. The only thing is careful not to overdo it when you are changing color of food because you don't want to end up with alien food. The color of the food needs to still look realistic for your viewer to get hungry. That's one key thing about food photography, that colors need to look realistic enough. However, you can change it to anything you want. It's uh, this Photoshop tool will turn your food into a chameleon. You can do it with food. So for example, you can change the color of your macarons. You can change the color of like your strawberries if they're not red enough. Or you can change colors of, you know, like your mint leaf if they're a little bit wilted and you want to make them pop a little bit more. Or if you have candy and you want to change the color of the candy, go for it. And you can also use it to change color of your props. Because, for example, if you don't have green plates and you really need to have a green plate, then this is a super useful technique to have in your toolbox. What Photoshop tools do we need to achieve this kind of look? So we need to be familiar with the selection tools. You need some adjustment layers after you've done your selection and you need to be able to adjust your masks and, um, and your selections. So, so let's jump into Photoshop and I will show you. Okay, so first up, I want to give you an example with these macarons. I want to change their color from this lovely raspberry pink to something a little bit more punchy, like a purple. And I've done it here and we are, I'm going to now show you exactly how we achieved this look basically. So we start with our row image here. I just applied the basic Lightroom adjustments to this image. So the first thing you want to do is you want to grab your selection tool. Now there are a few ways that you can select your subject. Um, so it depends on your subject. So the, the selection tool that will work best for your own specific subject is very dependent. For this subject, I am probably going to use either the quick selection tool or the magic wand. The quick selection, as the word says, is just a quick selection, meaning you can use the selection tool as a brush and the areas where you brush will be selected. Photoshop does a quite a good job at understanding where the edges are, as you can see. Um, so this one, again, it's a quick selection tool. So sometimes you will make mistakes, um, but Photoshop generally helps with, um, with this to make a quick selection. Otherwise, with the magic wand tool, you can select based on color. Um, this sometimes is a little bit more tricky because as you can see, uh, some of the color leaks around and it's generally, I guess it depends on the kind of subject that you have. But this one, it takes a little longer to kind of get it right. Um, you can adjust here the tolerance level to uh, help you make it a little bit more efficient. But I find that this one is not one of my favorite tools. It just takes me forever to, um, to, to do my selections. And the object selection tool is a super smart tool. However, if you've got subjects that touch each other and if you have the kind of like, you can see that I cr just created a quick marquee tool around my main uh, subject and Photoshop basically can understand 
where your subject is and create a selection around it. However, this is not super, super accurate. So I tend not to use this method unless I have an object that is super solid and it's like away from my other subjects. In this case, I kind of want to use the, this is what you can do with the Photoshop object selection tool as well. So it's pretty good at selecting the out, the general shape of the subject. So you can start with that and then you can fine tune your selection with the quick selection tool. Now for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just going to do this quickly. So I won't waste too much time overdoing my selection um, because I want to show you how to uh, change the color primarily. Like that's the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm just going to do here a quick selection. And as you can see, I'm using the selection, the quick selection tool. Uh, the way it works is if you press, it works as a brush and it will add or remove from the main selection. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to remove the white from the pink. So as you can see, Photoshop selected, oh, my whole, the whole macaron here. And what I want to do is remove the white from the selection because I don't want to change the color of the white. I only want to change the color of the pink. So I don't want the white to be affected. So I'm pressing option on my keyboard as I brush with my brush. So the keep pressing option, if you want to um, remove stuff from your selection and let go of option of the option key, if you want to then re add that stuff to your selection. And this is how um, you basically fine tune your selections. Again, now I am just gonna do it quickly so that we can move on with the rest of the tutorial. And so I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna speed this up and then I will show you the important part of the tutorial, which is change the actual color of the things. Okay, so I have my selection done here. As you can see, it's not perfect. It's fine for, again, for the purpose of this tutorial, I don't wanna go into too much depth when it's about selections. Um, what you can do is like, if you do select and mask or feather, then you can uh, really adjust the, your selection probably, but we are going to move on from that. So we have our selection done. And what we're going to do now is in the layer panel, we are going to create a group and we call this um, color or whatever works for you. Just to remind yourself that this is the group where we are going to change the color of our subject. I've created, after creating the group, what I want to do is click on the layer mask. And basically what this did is it turned the selection into a layer mask. And this is what I want to do. And the reason why is because this way I can adjust the mask without worrying about the selection. I can apply multiple adjustment layers. I can do multiple things inside the, inside the group and it will all only happen within the mask that I have selected. So to change the color, what I want to do is I want to go down to the adjustment la layers and I want to select solid color. Now, <laughs> woo, this looks ugly. Yes, it's supposed to. So don't worry, no panic. Uh, we are going to start by selecting our first um, main color that we want. So something like a, a lilac type type color. Again, don't worry. I know it's looking super weird, but uh, we're going to adjust it in a minute. So this is our basic color that we want to change and we click OK. So now we have this color fill, this solid color fill. Now, the only thing you need to do is change the um, blending mode of the layer from normal. We go all the way down here. These are the um, uh, blending modes for colors. So as you can see, if we change it to hue, we are already getting a pretty good result. 
saturation not really because it's basically just saturating the base color that we had before even with the color layer it's doing a pretty good job and with the luminosity obviously it's, uh, it's not working so you can either change it to hue or to color in this case i'm gonna go hi hey, hey, i'm gonna go ahead and change it to color and there you go we're pretty much done now the only thing that we might need to do is go zoom in and fine tune a little bit again the selection make it a little bit smoother around the edges and then you can toggle this on and off just to see the before and the and the after again the selection is not super perfect but this is going to give you a quick idea of how you can achieve a color change in Photoshop. Take your time to really perfection the, the selection here and really like uh, go into more details uh, to give it a more realistic look. Another example I want to give you here is with changing the color of the props. I didn't have a green plate. I, I actually don't mind the pink one, but just for the purpose of the tutorial, I am going to turn this plate from pink to green. Now I've already done a selection here so that we can speed up the whole process. Um, and it's again, not perfect. Like you can see, there's a lot, uh, a lot of mistakes going on here, but let's try and adjust it a little bit. But um, again, it, this is just like a tutorial for color changing. It's not, uh, it's not a tutorial for masking. So I am just going to give you a quick overview of what, how to change the color props. Oh my God, look at this yummy, yummy dollop of cream over here. Oh, this cake was delicious. So <laughs> we repeat the process. So now we have our selection. We click on groups down here bottom right we create a group we call it color uh, or plate color or whatever works for you really then after creating the group we go again down bottom right and we click on add add layer mask which will turn the selection into a layer mask then we click on the group we go down to um, adjustment layers and we create a solid color adjustment layer. Here, what you can do is you can use your A dropper as well if you want to match the color of the props to, um, you know, the color of whatever other props you've got. You can go down here, select the art dropper tool and just do it that way. Or you can do it manually here in the color panel and we click OK. And again, obviously it's looking pretty crap at the moment, but then we go down here and we change the blending mode of the layer to either hue or color. Color in this case is a little bit too punchy uh, for my taste, it's a little bit too vibrant and it doesn't really look realistic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select hue this time. As you can see, it's a lovely pastel color. It's not affecting, um, the, like it's affecting the overall color palette of my picture, which I really love. It's like this green minty color. As you can see here, something weird has happened because my selection was not perfect. That's, that's why it's actually important to work a little bit on your selection beforehand so that you avoid stuff like this. Um, so the most time consuming part of changing colors in Photoshop is actually about making the selection properly because then the actual process of changing color as you can see is quite fast. So in terms of selection you can use the lasso, you can use the quick selection tool, you can use the object selection magic wand that there's plenty plenty of options to get a good selection done in the first place before you actually work on changing the colors. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ciao.